Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to start to talk about what we call the Norton Equivalent Circuit. Now if you remember, the last several sections what we've talked about is the Thevenin Equivalent Circuit and we're moving on into the topics into the next type of equivalent circuit which is the Norton Equivalent. Um, so when you study circuit analysis, you study things in sequence because just like many other things in math and science, you have to learn and understand the previous material so that the later material you know, becomes understandable. And that's what we've done here. We first started off this uh, set of lessons with source transformations, and we did that stuff. And then we did Thevenin equivalent, which as you remember, is basically a way to take a, a resistive circuit with sources and with resistors, and from terminals A and B, rewrite it into an equivalent voltage source with a series resistance. That's what a Thevenin equivalent is. And that voltage source with a series resistance is absolutely equivalent from terminal A and B perspective. It's absolutely equivalent to the original circuit you had, right? That's what we've been doing so far. Well, now we're going to turn our attention to a Norton equivalent, which is just another kind of equivalent circuit that can also be used to model a circuit between terminals A and B. But the good news is, and this is why we did so many problems with Thevenin equivalent, the good news is that once you understand the Thevenin equivalent circuit, the Norton equivalent circuit is trivial and very, very easy to understand and to solve for. All right. So let me just kind of introduce it by just saying the, the following. I mean, we talked about this before, but a Thevenin equivalent, if you remember, is basically a voltage source. We call it V Thevenin. And we have a resistance in series with it like this, and this is terminal B, and this is terminal A, and this resistance is R Thevenin. So this is how we can model pretty much any circuit that has resistors and voltage sources in it, right? And so this is very, very important, and we use it all the time, but if you kind of think for a second, uh, this is a voltage source in series with a resistor. Now, if you think back to what we have uh, did for the first few sections of, of this batch of lessons in this course, we talked about source transformations. And that was basically learning how to take a voltage source that's in series with a resistance. Now think back to that for a second and ask yourself, how did we transform those sources? We basically said if we have a voltage source in series with a resistance, which is what we have here, it's the same thing as taking this resistor and putting it in parallel with a current source, right? So we switched back and forth between a current source and voltage source, we just had to move the resistor up and down and calculate the value of, of the current source. But you can move freely back and forth between those two representations when you're talking about sources. But now we've said we can represent any circuit by the Stevenin equivalent, which is simply a voltage source that is in series with a resistance. So therefore, you can always switch between a Thevenin equivalent and, you guessed it, a Norton equivalent, which is just when you transform this guy. So this is a Norton equivalent uh, circuit. And what that's going to look like is it's going to be a constant current source, right, in parallel with a resistor. Right? So typically in a textbook you'll see this current source has a value I sub n for Norton current. And this resistance has a value of R sub n for Norton resistance. But what I'm telling you here is, kind of from a big picture point of view, you can take any circuit you want and you can make a Thevenin equivalent between 